Now, Thailand says Southeast Asian nations are committed to signing what is set to be the world's biggest trade deal next year. Speaking at the ASEAN summit in Thailand, Prime Minister Prayut Chan-o-cha said that negotiations for the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or RCEP, have concluded. RCEP is a landmark trade pact between Southeast Asia and six partner countries, including Japan, India, South Korea, and China. And joining us from Dubai is Dr. Amitendu Palit from the Institute of Southeast or South Asian Studies, NUS. Dr. Amitendu, Amitendu uh, let's talk about the uh, trade pact RCEP. Thailand uh, says oh, conclusive talks have been held uh, and we can expect a signing next year. What's your take on the situation? I would consider this to be a milestone achievement because uh, the RCEP has been uh, negotiated for the last seven years almost. We began negotiating this in 2013. It's been a long and hard process of negotiations. There have been several complications, several challenges that have been encountered. But I think the biggest uh, signal uh, that comes out today, uh, once the 16 countries have decided to conclude the negotiations, is the fact that notwithstanding the challenges and hurdles, these are countries that remain committed to the cause of a free trade agreement. And by that commitment, they also stay completely committed uh, to the goal of advancing free trade uh, in Asia Pacific. So I think it's going to be a great story for trade, a very positive story, and a great signal for regional commitment, regional ordering, and regional architecture leading to growth of good trade. Um, Dr. Amit Sandhu, but you mentioned there earlier about the challenges. It's believed that India has continued yeah. to raise doubts about this trade pact. So what are India's reservations about the RCEP? I think I would put it this way, that India as an economy has uh, competitive advantages in sectors that are quite different from a large number of other Southeast Asian economies, which are mostly in the areas of services. So India has been expecting to get the greater market access for its services in the other member countries. Uh, which unfortunately not always are very easy to be sanctioned because uh, opening up domestic markets for services means uh, there are a lot of difficult domestic policy decisions that are to be taken as opposed to cutting down tariffs. Number two is that uh, India has had a fairly uh, disappointing record of benefiting from free trade agreements as certain studies show because these studies uh, reflect relatively poor and low utilization of the free trade agreements and there are also concerns in India about the fact that the country has uh, really had only large volumes of imports uh, through the FTAs that it has signed as opposed to exports. Now uh, most of these concerns are probably not correct in the sense that these concerns are those uh, which are selective, which are kind of based on incomplete studies, and the fact remains that India can gain significantly from RC, provided it can put in action some uh, acts at its domestic policy side, which essentially reflect on improving the competitiveness of domestic industry. The discussions on RCEP have been going on for years. Is the trade war between the U.S. and China yeah. given new impetus, perhaps, to complete a deal quicker? I think the U.S.-China trade war has made an impact, and I think the impact is essentially from the side that the U.S.-China trade war has uh, had two effects. First, uh, I think for regional economies which are highly dependent on trade, uh, particularly from Southeast Asia, the U.S.-China trade war has been a bit of a shock, and these are economies which are pretty tightly integrated into the global value chains. These global value chains are showing signs of disruption and dislocation as a result of the U.S.-China trade war. So there is where the RCEP provides an opportunity of uh, getting these economies to much larger, bigger markets through a common set of rules of origin and investment and services. And it is also a signal that much as the U.S.-China trade war uh, remains at the level where it is, there are other countries of the world, particularly from Asia, who are uh, able to come together, talk, and take the agenda of trade forward. All right, many thanks for your thoughts this evening. Dr. Amitendu Palit from the Institute of South Asian Studies, NUS.